Hello, welcome. Introduction to Bayesian decision theory. Initially, I will start with the concept of inference. Our problem of inference is related to analyzing or understanding usually large amounts of data, some cases small amounts of data. The goal is to understand the process of data generation, how any data set is generated. That is the general goal. Uh, usually, even though the data can be a deterministic process, the problem is the model can be very complicated and the number of parameters can be very large and become intractable. A common solution to this problem of uh, inference is to model the knowledge or the process as a stochastic process, a random process. Then by using the probability theory, it is possible to analyze the uncertainty in the data and approximate the underlying patterns that is for example what are the what are the most likely causes for a particular behavior in a data for example a trend in a social network data so typically an inference problem consists of hidden variables z which are usually unobservable that is for example uh, the process of rainfall and you are trying to measure it using a satellite based instrument so you cannot directly measure the amount of rainfall from a space borne satellite instrument. So the instrument actually measures the radiation from this rainfall. So this is the observable, observable variable x and usually this variable is produced by a complicated transformation usually radiative transfer model from the rainfall information. So there is actually a deterministic relationship between the microwave radiation and the rainfall considering that the satellite instrument is a microwave based. So the problem is F can be very complicated that is the transformation can be a very complicated model and sometimes it can be unknown. A good solution to this problem is modeling the observed variable or observed data as a random process or use this probability model to make inference about the data. For example, you can determine the mean, variance and also predict the future outcomes. Consider an experiment where you toss a coin n time or the process of this coin toss can be analyzed using physics. Basically, you have to know the weight of the coin, the height at, at which it is tossed, the force with which it is tossed and so on. So instead of uh, trying to track all these physical parameters, it is much easier to model the outcome of coin toss using a probability model. For example, the toss output can have only two outcomes that is either heads or tails. So we model it with a variable x that, that belongs to the set with only two elements that is 0 and 1 where 0 stands for tails and 1 stands, stands for heads. So the probability that x equal to 1 is p0 and probability that x equal to 0 that is tails is 1 minus p0. So since there are only two possible outcomes the values of probabilities are also have only one unknown value that is p0. So usually the goal in problem like this is to find the probabilities of each outcome. Experimentally, we can determine an estimate of this uh, probability p0 by, use, by counting the number of heads and dividing with the total number of uh, experiments or total number of uh, times the coin is tossed. So, so we have an estimate of the probability. Hence by using probability model, it is possible to understand the understand a deterministic process and also make predictions about it. Here is a small illustration of a Bayesian classification. Initially, uh, let me define the um, four fundamental probabilities in any Bayesian model. The first one is the prior probability. It is usually known as the prior belief. It can be defined as the knowledge or the probability about the classification or the classes before any data is observed. A good example is uh, the uniform distribution. In many problems, uh, uniform distribution can be taken as the uh, prior probability. The next one is the class likelihood or the likelihood probability. It is the, uh, it is the conditional probability that an event has occurred from a given class. And also, it is the class probability when, o when the decision is made only based on the data. Uh, without any processing of the prior beliefs. The next one is evidence. It is the evidence of the uh, that an event or a data has been observed. Usually it is the sum of all the likelihood probabilities or in the case of a continuous probability density function, it is the integral of the 
likelihood probability density and finally the, and the most important one is the posterior probability of a class it it can be it is defined or it is obtained by combining the prior probability with the likelihood probability and proper weighting with the evidence in real world applications it can be defined as the so it it, it can be seen as the a decision made on uh, observations of the real world or a basically an update of your beliefs based on the observations from the real world so that is an intuitive explanation of posterior probability here the label c stands for the class labels and x for data or observations or any events the most important formula in the bayes model is the bayes rule it is basically for the formula for obtaining the posterior probability as i discussed before it is defined as the uh, ratio between the uh, product of a prior probability and uh, likelihood probability with the evidence so this bayes rule can also be used for classification if you are actually looking at a binary classification that is c has only two values that is 0 and 1 then you can choose the class 1 if the posterior probability of class 1 is greater than the posterior probability of the class 0 and you can choose 0 in the other case in the case of multiple classes that is m classes this uh, classification rule can be extended as follows you can choose the ith class if the ith class is the maximum uh, has the maximum posterior probability among all the m classes so this equation this expression defines this m class classification rule to illustrate a simple example let us consider the problem of assessing the risk uh, of a customer risk on a customer for the uh, bank manager in, in order to in order to uh, issue a loan so here the c is equal to 1 means we are dealing with a low risk customer and c equal to 0 means very high risk customer. commonly used data consists of incomes and savings so the goal is to decide whether the customer is high risk or low risk based on his data such as income and saving for instance consider a customer where his savings are very small portion of his total income then then you, uh, you can say that this is a high risk customer so here we use the prior probability p of c which is the initial assessment of the customer or initial guess on the risk of the customer without actually looking into his data but after analyzing his data that is his income and savings and other information we have available then it is possible to make a educated guess that is the post we can actually calculate the posterior probability and decide whether he is high risk or low risk this is a simple example on bayesian classification now we move to bayesian risk an important concept in bayesian risk is the concept of loss is similar to the concepts gain and loss in economics for example consider a medical diagnosis scenario if a automated algorithm gives a negative result for a condition which is in reality a positive condition that is for example a serious medical condition exists but the algorithm says it gives a negative result then this is a very costly mistake so a high amount of loss is associated with this kind of wrong decision a good alternative or good procedure in this kind of situation is to defer the judgment to a human expert rather than depending on an automated system and the problem of loss is usually built into the uh, classification system uh, using the concept of bayesian risk uh, another example for this kind of kind of loss is in a loan application scenario for example if a bank uh, if a banker ac accepts an application from a high risk customer then this decision can also be very expensive and finally the correct decisions that is when you accept a low risk customer or even you identify a cancer patient then they have no loss at least from the point of view of the decision maker so hence the bayesian risk is associated with the action that is the process of assignment of a decision or a class to a particular problem and expected risk is the weighted sum of this posterior probabilities by these losses posterior probabilities are actually the probabilities of all the classes given the data so this is the expression for the bayesian risk this is the expression for the bayesian risk so it is the weighted sum of the posterior probabilities for all the possible classes or all the possible actions so the classification rule based on this bayesian risk is basically one has to choose the action that gives the minimum risk 
that is when r alpha is equal, is the equal to the minimum risk among all the k possible actions for example if the loss is defined as such that uh, making a correct decision corresponds to zero loss or making a negative decision or wrong decision such as a miss in a medical diagnosis uh, as having loss one then the classification based on variation risk is similar to the classification based on maximum posterior probability if we see here uh, the variation risk the Bayesian risk actually boils down to the sum of all the posterior probabilities of other classes the other than the correct decision or other than the correct label so which is basically equal to 1 minus the posterior probability of the correct class or the posterior probability of the class given the data where this class is this class label is the true class minimum Bayesian risk based classification is when this uh, when we have this loss function uh, is equivalent to the maximum posterior probability based classification. An important concept in classification is the is discriminant function. These discriminant functions are basically these discriminant functions are basically uh, like borders or boundaries between different decision regions. For example, in this plot, uh, the the feature set in red are separated by the feature set in blue by this discrimination function. So uh, in a two dimensional, for example, if there are only two features, discriminant function is usually a one dimensional plot that is either a curve or a straight line. So basic idea of this discriminant function is that it separates uh, different decision regions. In terms of its relationship to the uh, risk function, these discriminant functions are uh, equal to negative risk function, negative expected risk. So these discriminant functions can be can be described as forming class boundaries. For a simple two class or binary classification problem, the, there is only one discriminant function as shown in the plot, defined as the difference between these two functions G1 and G2. And when you convert these values into in terms of risk function, it is the difference between the risk functions are corresponding to the two actions, but it is in the negative sign. So hence, if you want to uh, for a given action alpha one, its corresponding risk is less than the risk of action alpha 2 then we choose action alpha 1 this is the decision rule in terms of its relation to the maximum posterior probability rule uh, the discriminant function is directly related to the posterior probability so in the case of binary classification g1 of x is related to p of c1 given x that is the posterior probability of class 1 and similarly g2 of x related, is related to the posterior probability of class 2 so hence the decision rule uh, is choose class 1 if g1 of x is greater than g2 of x that is discriminant that is if the data lies in the region 1 and choose c2 if it lies in the region 2 and uh, in later we will see the uh, how we use discriminant functions for multiple class multi class classification or multiple category classification another important concept in bayesian decision theory is is utility function the concept of utility functions basically we have agents in an environment and these agents are also called uh, also known as rational agents is to make rational decisions so that they can achieve their targets or goals an optimization function used in this context is known as expected utility it is defined as the sum of uh, weighted sum of the posterior probabilities of the output states so these weights are basically the utility functions and a decision function uh, in this context is choose an action alpha such that the expected utility the expected utility corresponding to this function is actually the maximum for all the possible action among all possible actions in classification problems uh, this maximum utility corresponds to minimum expected risk in this plot we see the decision boundaries for a three class problem a three category classification problem there is a region here which which does not belong to any of the three regions and and this region can be explained by the utility function for example, if the utility of making a decision of taking an action or making a decision in one of these regions is um, lesser than the utility of making no decision, do not classify the object into any of the classes or any of the categories. Now we move to cost of observation. Some observations are more expensive than other observations. Hence, before collecting the observations, it is very important or vital to establish that these observations are actually valuable for our purpose for example in medical diagnosis observations such as heart rate blood pressure are uh, relatively much cheaper 
but the information provided by these observations are is also very limited uh, on the other hand uh, observations uh, from medical procedures like blood tests are very expensive but they also provide very valuable information so in this kind of situation it is very important to know whether blood tests are required or not before ordering them for this purpose expected utility function previously defined can be used to evaluate the cost of or value of uh, these observations and these observations can have multiple or different types of costs for example actual economic cost of uh, taking the observations and also psychological cost of uh, taking observations on the patients and so on and so now consider how do you actually evaluate the importance of a uh, additional observation consider we have we have already a set of already available observations x then its utility function is defined as false and now you take a new observation then it, the new utility function is again the summation of this weighted posterior probabilities so if the utility function with the, the new observation z is greater than the utility the total utility function with the observation x then you consider the value, the new observation to be valuable and, it, and one should also take into consideration the cost of taking observations another application of bayesian decision theory is is bayesian network bayesian networks are also known as belief networks probabilistic networks graph models and so on basically a belief network or bayesian network consists of nodes and connections and these nodes represent random variables and the connections actually how are qualified or weighted by the probabilities of these random variables usually uh, the nodes at the lowest level have they have their prior probabilities and the nodes at uh, the end uh, can have the evidence and also likelihood probabilities and we can calculate posterior probabilities from all these values here i show different types of uh, bayesian networks or graphs the first one is a cyclic graph in the cyclic graphs there are actually multi, uh, there are connections back and forth between different nodes a cyclic directed graphs in this uh, the connections are actually directed from one node to the next level from one level to the next level and there are no circular connections the next one is causal graph for example if you are looking at a, the problem of Uh, deciding whether the wet, wet the, whether a grass is wet because it because of rain or because of the sprinkler you can actually look at a graph like this for example if you observe that it is cloudy then there is no need to use the sprinkler and the rain is most probably or most likely cause of a wet grass and when there is no cloud then you can actually turn on the sprinkler and sprinkler and the use of sprinkler is the most likely cause for a wet grass so in this way you can actually represent causal relationships in bayesian networks and another important concept is the use of hidden variables for example when a customer comes to a supermarket and buys stuff like baby food diapers and milk uh, you can clearly guess that they are all related but uh, it's not like they are causally connected they are actually connected to another hidden variable like baby at home so hidden variables are not directly observable but they can actually infer they can actually be inferred from direct observations